Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for March 16th, 2018. This is episode 57. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about hot dogs, and you'll find out why shortly. Flow, logic apps, serverless, all wrapped up with a chat with Steph Jan. A typical disclaimer, while I am a Microsoft employee, the views expressed in this video are my own. So in this episode, hot dog, not hot dog. And then as part of the chat with Seth Jam, we're going to get into Flow, Logic App, Serverless, and also talk a little bit about the upcoming Integrate 2018 conference in London in June. So you might be wondering, hot dog, not hot dog, what's the deal with this? So as I mentioned last week, John Levesque, a colleague of mine and myself, participated in a virtual conference called MVP Days. And in this session, we demonstrated how you could build a hot dog, not hot dog application using Microsoft Flow. So if you are a fan of the TV show Silicon Valley, this will make perfect sense to you. Um, if not, you're gonna have to go ahead and watch. But I think the, the big thing to take away from this is that even though Flow is considered part of the citizen application platform, it is very powerful. And especially when you pair it up with services like the Custom Vision API, which is part of Azure Cognitive Services, it really unlocks a whole world of new opportunity. So uh, this was a, a lot of fun making this video, so I highly recommend you go and check it out. You can find it on John's YouTube space, and you'll find the link there. Also, if you wanna follow John, PNW Adventure Guy on Twitter. Uh, and we had so much fun uh, building that video that we decided to go ahead and create another one. So we are working on our next project, I'll let you know once we've actually gone ahead and published that. But once again, it'll be fun. It'll be flow. And uh, it'll also have a mobile component. So now let's cut into the segment that I recorded with Steph Jan when he was in Kirkland or Redmond uh, for the recent MVP Summit. Um, as he does mention, since the MVP Summit is under NDA, we didn't get into any of those specific details. We did talk about some things that are very front and center these days. We did talk about when is the right time to use Microsoft Flow and Azure Logic Apps. We also talked about serverless and how it's becoming a pretty overloaded term these days. And then lastly, we talked a little bit more about the upcoming Integrate Summit. We're live. We're live. Okay, hi. We're here in uh, Kirkland. Right? <laughs> That's correct, yes. Okay, yeah. You know, there's no... What are you doing in Kirkland? Well, I just... What had, brings you by? What brings me by was the MVP Summit, which was just ended last week. Started on Monday all the way up to Friday with a lot of Azure content. All MDA, so I cannot talk about it, but I did have a lot of conversations with my peer MVPs and some of the product group uh, members as well, Flow, Pro Integration, and so on. As you're messaging, you're going to throw, just oh, yeah. ignore oh, yeah. Dan like that? No, we can ignore Dan. Dan was out there too, and he took care of all of us. So it was really amazing. So we even went to Alka Beach yesterday to uh, hang out with him. So that was all cool. You bet. Yeah, sure. So, you know, usually we do demos and talk about technologies. Now we want to take it a little bit different and talk a little bit about logic apps and flow. Some of the stuff we've been doing. So every alternating week, you talk about flow. And I True. Yeah. We normally talk about the pro integration space, messaging, not forgetting Dan, this talk, uh, not that much, not that we don't like it, but it's more like there's a shift towards the cloud. So we emphasize a little bit more in that area. I do the think, cloud or serverless? Uh, the cloud and serverless. <laughs> and and uh, we will do some more hybrid scenarios in the coming future. Um, so you definitely will do that. Um, Looking at uh, flow and logic apps, there's always this, this question that, you know, is, it, once I do these talks, sometimes people ask, yeah, well, what's the distinction with flow? So when I was in the dynamics group, they were like, I was talking about logic apps, and they were like, hey, but what about flow? So since you're on the flow team, it's kind of, well, you know, what's the distinction between flow and logic apps? From your so, perspective. Yeah, so good question. So it comes up a fair bit, and uh, I think that the way I would look at it is I would look at it from a persona perspective. So one myth, so we're going to demystify a myth. Okay, cool. and there's a myth that flow is not as mission critical or shouldn't support mission critical processes like Logic Apps does. And that's a myth because 
Flow itself sits on top of logic apps. So when you think about scalability, performance, reliability, a flow is, is essentially a logic app from that perspective. So that is something we can just erase right off the, right off the bat. Now I think when it comes to personas, obviously logic apps is a first party Azure service. It lights up in the Azure portal. It has support for Visual Studio um, integration. It supports continuous integration, con continuous deployment, and really caters to a pro dev uh, persona and pro devs um, in general. Flow is, you know, we've abstracted some of the sort of inner workings of Azure and um, logic apps and other parts of Azure, including like resource groups, subscriptions, things of that nature. And we've essentially exposed it as a SaaS application. Uh -huh. So we do cater, I would say, to a different audience. Uh, the audience may be less technical, although we do have a lot of technical folks that are, you know, using Flow and building upon it. But it is this idea that you don't have to be concerned with resource groups, you don't have to be concerned with subscriptions, and you really can get started at our maker portal, so flow.microsoft.com, and then really just focus on wiring up your workflow and um, you know, taking advantage of essentially the same connector library. There's a few differences um, between Logic Apps and Flow, but for the most part, it's the same set of connectors. And I'd say another sort of distinction is that um, you know, we do tend to gravitate more towards the office crowd, not to say that we don't have other connectivity and use cases, but you're starting to see more and more first-party integrations with the office suite. So today, SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, you can actually go in and there's basically a ribbon as part of the ribbon, there's a flow button, mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and basically execute a flow from there. Uh, we've got some other first-party integrations coming very, very soon, which I can't talk about mm -hmm. at this point, but it sort of speaks to, you know, catering to that user. And, um, you know, Dynamics is another one. We've got first-party integration with them. From a CRM perspective, that's available. And Teams is another one that we've recently yep. rolled out where you can actually execute a flow from within Teams. And you can also author from there and, in addition, manage your approvals from within Teams. So, so you can kind of see, like, we are catering to, I would say, a different audience, sort yep. of generally. But, um, you know, I think the, the, the bottom line, I'll leave you with this, is, like, use the tool that makes you most productive. Yeah. And if you feel more comfortable in Visual Studio, like, yeah. go ahead and use Logic Apps. And if you feel more comfortable, um, you know, using just sort of the maker portal, then knock yourself out and go ahead and use that tool. I don't think you can lose um, either way. Both built on the same underlying platform. Both democratize the idea of integration yeah. and workflow. And it really just needs to fit into what's best within your organization. And it can also relate to licensing as well. There's some subtle differences from a, a licensing perspective. Um, you might have some entitlement for Flow already. Um, Logic Apps does use a very friendly graduated consumption model, which yep. is great. True. You you pay for what you use. You're getting value out of it. You want to use more, you pay a little more, but you actually pay less uh, per co uh, less uh, per unit of cost. So you know it is a win-win regardless. Okay, so to sum it correctly, pick the right tool depending on what use case you have. It's, if you go for flow, it's less control, but also less worry, because that's all we taken care of by uh, the underlying Azure. And if it's more business-like, more with SaaS, a little bit more democratizing it to certain uh, personas within the people that are kind of really used to Office, then, hey, flow is your thing. Otherwise, if it's more developer-like, you want to have more control, that type of stuff, which you explain that it's more for the developer. So, yeah, that's yeah and I guess business. another sort of... So I wouldn't say just for Office, but certainly that's yeah, a yeah. popular use case. But I think also when you start to think about like data mapping, data integration, um, you know, as soon as you need the integration account, like clearly yeah. you're exactly. in a yeah. Logic Apps um, situation. Yeah. If uh, you want to integrate with SAP and you know do B two B and things of that nature, um, you know, if you're integration accounts, you're you're naturally in, in Logic Apps. Cool. So I think we've demystified that quite nicely. I hope so. I hope so. Okay, cool. So I talked a little bit about Logic Apps being part of you know the service platform. Although when I looked at Logic Apps, I didn't found out there are some limitations with regards to connectors that kind of could throttle, and also some of the the HTTP um, with the number of, of scales. So you know I kind of you know debating a bit was it truly servers or not and. 
You know, you hear this term a lot, being coined a lot in certain areas, and in general, I just want to know what service, in general, so not looking at some of the mics of technology, but in general, what do you think what service is? You know, just to give you a little bit, kind of, you so, know, the audience, what, what serverless is, actually. So, in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I think serverless is sort of an evolution of PaaS, and sort of the, the idea, everyone's familiar with PaaS, but the whole idea is you want to not worry about your infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. You're basically outsourcing that to a cloud provider, and you're saying, you know, you worry about uh, updates, you worry about patching, uh, you worry about sort of uh, underlying hardware failures, and you just basically provide an SLA and sort of keep me up. You know, in my mind, and this once again is my opinion, is when you start to talk about serverless, I think the it's sort of the evolution of PaaS, but then it helps you deal with scale. Yeah. And it helps you in the sense that you don't have to think about it. So you are not worried about sort of um, any limitations. Um, basically, whatever workload you decide to throw at a service, your expectation is mm -hmm. that okay. the cloud provider provides this idea of infinite scale and basically will also, you know, basically return to normal. Yeah. And it still follows a consumption-based uh, building model. Um, so the, the other thing I'd say is it's, you know, serverless has become, you know, very entrenched in marketing speak, mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily mean one thing's bad or good, right? I think no, no. the whole idea is that you as a customer need to be getting value, and if you're getting value and it's more of a pass service, then that's all that should really matter. Who cares if it's serverless or not? Um, obviously, service has some very sort of positive connotations associated with it, mm -hmm. but right. I think you as a customer need to figure out, you know, how do you derive value? Uh, the whole idea for moving to the cloud is actually you're shifting sort of your responsibilities and your accountabilities, and you're focusing on value. So if as long as you're getting that, I don't get too hung up on is something just pass or is it serverless. I think as a customer, you need to focus on value, and you also want to ensure that the cloud provider can address your unpredictable um, consumption requirements. And you shouldn't have to think about turning knobs, um, you know, pre-allocating other underlying computes in order to solve a problem. Um, basically, that should really be the cloud provider's um, responsibility, and you should focus on, you know, your business logic and addressing business problems and actually returning value to your organization, and that should be your core focus. Well, it's good that you explain that too, so that gives me a little bit of thought, food for thought as well, because I just created that uh, thing as we, you know, we have this serverless platform and then it's kind of, yeah, is it truly really serverless? And because some have the limitation or if you look at functions, you can either have it on consumption plan, but you can also have it on app serves and then it's kind of, you know, you get some of the debate with other, people's when you, uh, other people when you talk about it and like, yeah, is it truly serverless or not? And, and I think, yeah, your, your opinion about it really fits well about that thought. But yeah, you're right, if it's serverless or a platform as a service, it's all about driving the value and creating a solution that's suitable for the customer. So you're completely right. And there's, there's an interesting tweet, and we'll highlight it here, and it was uh, from Kelsey Hightower, who's a you know, very well respected in the uh, industry. I think yeah. probably more so on the Kubernetes sort of container side of the equation, but he makes a joke about like sort of marketers um, have basically now grabbed the hold of serverless. And if you go through a lot mm -hmm. of the popular uh, database as a service platforms, uh, pretty much every cloud provider is tagging them mm -hmm. as serverless. And so that definitely begs the question of like, mm -hmm. is it this truly serverless? True, yeah. Um, because like, is there infinite scale, right? Am I being charged on a true consumption basis? And the idea of like, I'm not using anything, I'm paying zero. Like that should be the expectation. So, yeah. you know, could you really say that's true across all of these different databases as a service? But um, yeah, it's an interesting tweet, interesting conversation that's emerged as a result of that. So yeah, uh, that was pretty cool. So yeah, definitely those kind of things like Flow, Logic App, some of the other technology servers, some of all that stuff we will definitely see at Integrate, which is uh, 4 until the 6th of June uh, this year in London. So I think those technologies and, and time of terms will be coined there as well. I think you'll be doing a session at Integrate too. Yeah, I'll be there talking about Microsoft Flow. Mm -hmm. Really, I look forward to this yeah. event every year. The, I guess it's probably the last four years I've been able to. Yeah, this will to be, be your there. anniversary or your fifth, you know, this is your fifth appearance at, yeah. at Integrate, so that's cool. Uh, this last year yeah. I've talked about Logic Apps, and yeah. the year before things were IoT, and mm -hmm. this year we flow, so um, very much looking forward to yeah. returning back.
Yeah, I've done some uh, IoT as well in the past. I've talked about desktop adapters back in the day or the cloud-based adapters uh, that kind of support the hybrid scenario using service bus. Um, last year I talked about the value proposition of, of Logic App itself and this year I'll go all out on messaging itself so that will be cool too. Cool. So yeah, definitely looking forward to be, for me it will be the sixth appearance on on the, this uh, event, the Integrate, used to be the Bistop uh, days back in the day when we started this. Uh, so yeah, definitely looking forward to it. I um, hope we'll can surpass the 400 plus people. So uh, you can still now sign up. It's still early bird until the 31st of March, and then the price will go up a bit. So don't doubt, soon the agenda and speakers will be revealed, uh, we expect. So yes. so yeah, save some cash, and then yeah. you allocate it serverless, and you're good. Yeah, exactly. And you know, if you, you know, we're doing middle of Friday, and both of us will be there. And if you want to, you know, debate or you know, you know talk to us or challenge us or talk, you know, on what other things we should do with Middle of Friday, just please feel free to come up to us. Both of us will be there the full three days. We'll be on stage for a bit, but the rest you can just, you know, grab us and have a chat. Have a chat, exactly. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, well, thanks for uh, yeah. taking the, the time to, yeah, sure. to spend some time and record this live. Safe yeah, travels. Sure. And, and, uh, uh, thank you, yeah. We'll uh, see you again soon. Okay, bye, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Steph Jan, and uh, we'll catch you again next time on Middleware Friday. I'm too cool for a girlfriend Nowadays I don't